This week, we're going back to a gun debate in our classic interview segment. December 17th, 2012, we had Larry Pratt. Many of you may be familiar with him, executive director of Gun Owners of America. He had this insane debate with Piers Morgan when Piers was the host of uh, the program that formerly was Larry King's program on CNN. He debated Lad Everett, the director of communication from the coalition to stop gun violence. And they talked about what conclusions can we draw from incidents where guns are used to commit crimes, like, for example, Newtown, Connecticut and that tragedy. So I want to go back to this. The, the gun control debates are going to resurface as the 2016 election campaign gets going. And this was just a very interesting debate. And it will remind us of what we may expect going forward. I know this is an interview that not everybody saw who's currently watching our show. So let's go back to December of 2012. Larry Pratt and Lad Everett. Joining me now are Larry Pratt, executive director of Gun Owners of America and Lad Everett, director of communications from the Coalition to Stop Gun Violence. Now, gentlemen, initially we were going to have you on to talk about the Portland, Oregon shooting. Of course, over the weekend we had the shooting in Connecticut. So I think really that uh, is going to change our discussion a little bit, although maybe maybe less than I imagined. We'll see what you guys have to say. Larry, I want to go to you first. Do you believe we've seen anything over the weekend in Connecticut? that makes you rethink what the policy should be on gun regulation, registration and gun gun control and screening uh, at all in this country? Well, we certainly should be rethinking. We should be getting rid of the laws that have facilitated this kind of tragedy from occurring. Gun free zones uh, are a minor penalty compared to murder and yet uh, mass murder was contemplated and carried out. So it, it doesn't really make much sense to talk about uh, penalizing people for having a gun in a gun-free zone when the people who are being victimized need to be able to protect themselves with a gun. Okay, so Lad, let's pick that up. The idea that if more people in the schools were armed, that would be a better situation. Yeah, you know, David, I, I think we've reached a point, and particularly after the president's remarks last, last night, where we need to call madness madness. And, and I do know of one individual who, who did buy into Larry's thinking in this type of, uh, you know, his quote unquote solution. And that was Nancy Lanza. Uh, there is no doubt that Larry, the minute before this uh, kid went on a rampage, would have told us that Nancy Lanza, with the literal arsenal of firearms she had in her home, was probably the safest woman in America. Uh, I think this poisonous myth that the pro gun movement has circulated now for decades that guns make us safer, um, I, I think that died along with those little children on Friday, sadly. You know, we were talking about perhaps uh, getting into Oregon. At the mall in Oregon, there was a fellow carrying a gun uh, against the mall policy, which would have been some sort of minor infraction. Um, when he heard the sounds of the shooter firing, he ran toward them. And as he was coming into range, this shooter saw him. That's when he committed suicide. So to say that we can just dismiss the idea that guns make us safer, I think is... Uh, to miss the point that all the data we have show that where guns are more readily available, there we have less of a problem with criminals because criminals know they're going to meet uh, quite likely effective resistance. Does that, is that what the data says, Lad? No, it doesn't say that. I mean, I would encourage your, you know, the people that watch your show to look at the CDC data on state gun death rates and consistently states with weak gun laws have the highest rates of gun death. And you can look at, you know, even states like a state like Alaska uh, that always predominantly has one of the highest gun death rates in the 50 states. And, you know, states with very tough gun laws conversely have, have very low rates of gun death. You know, finally playing off what Larry just said, you know, um, you know, I'll leave it up to sane Americans to, to uh, think about whether having shootouts in malls with lunatics who have been legally armed or easily easily gained access to firearms makes them safer or not. Well, the data absolutely do not say what you're suggesting. The FBI for years have been producing data to show that the states that have the more, uh, they make it easier for people to have firearms, to carry firearms concealed. Those are the states that have the lower violent crime rates. And the idea that somehow we would be safer in a mall waiting for somebody to come and shoot us rather than being able to fight back. Uh, if we're talking about madness, I would say that borders on madness. 
well, well, madness is telling people that it's okay to be waiting in a mall for someone to come and shoot them. Uh, in other modern democracies, you don't have to worry about someone coming to shoot you in a mall or in a house of worship. You're or, mistaken or when again. You're kindergarten. No, no, I'm not mistaken. You're Larry. mistaken the facts again. Are, and, and again, in Europe, I, I'd they have to... had some of the greatest mass murders uh, in nonsense. just recent years, and in That's our nonsense. own country, the largest mass murder at a school occurred. In 1929 in Michigan, when 37 people were murdered by a guy with bombs. Larry, so the, the Larry, idea that you are going to make a safe by banning Larry, guns. Larry, let's take a step crazy. back for a second, guys. Those, those countries have astronomically lower rates of gun death, and you know that, Larry. Let's take a step back uh, for a second, We were gentlemen. talking Please, about we mass murders, and the fact of the matter is Europe has had uh, at least Europe as big a problem Europe has astronomically as lower rates of gun death, Larry, and you know that. And they I, have overall homicide and you know rates what? that are Europe, also dramatically lower than ours, Larry. If, if you overall look at Europe homicide over, the last Senate, my, uh, over the last century, my friend, they were not able to stop a mass murderer called Hitler or another one called Lenin because now they didn't go have the means of resisting them. Yeah. Hold on. You I think we have to wait. When we're, murder, when we're talking about Hitler. It's control laws, and it's crazy. Yeah. To suggest that somehow they have this lower rate of murder. I think because we have you, to Larry, have fact, hold on a second, guys, if I may here. If I may, I think we have to back off of the idea. Hey, hey you know, let, let's have one at a time. Your fact that what I'm trying to mass do. murder that has occurred by their governments, facilitated, caused by, directly brought about by, and preceded by gun confiscations. That's the history of the last century in Europe. Let me and pick we don't it up want to there for a second, here. guys. Guys, let me pick it up there for a second, if I may. Number one, I I don't think that talking about World War II is relevant to talking about the mass shootings that we're having in the U.S. in 2012, first of all. But secondly, when we talk about regulation and restriction on guns, the idea of taking everyone's guns is, number one, not on the table. And number two, that's not constitutional. So no one's talking about the fear-mongering that we're seeing about, hey, if we start regulating guns, we're all of a sudden taking everyone's guns. I think that's being way blown out we of the We regulate guns when we say that you can't have a gun in a mall. That is unconstitutional. Constitutional. That no, is a not. deadly idea, no, as we are finding out. No, it's not. And isn't it interesting that in Oregon, the mass murderer was cut very short because he saw somebody coming with a gun? Well, uh, lad, I think that the Constitution talks about well-regulated, right? So the idea look, of, look, of look, having look. Uh, no guns in specific places, is wouldn't that be yeah. part of the regulation? Let, let's get back to fact and, and, and move away from your conspiracy theory. When, when our founders debated the Second Amendment. There is existing surviving debate. Again, these things are facts, not, not fiction or conspiracy theory. The issue of individual self-defense was not even mentioned in those debates. Those debates, 100% of, of the discussion centered around military service in state militia forces. With the Second Amendment, James Madison, who was a Federalist, by the way, a man that believed that only by strengthening the federal government could we preserve our union, he was attempting to balance control of the state militia between the federal government and the states because in the Constitution, which came before the Bill of Rights, Madison had given a great control over the militia to the federal Congress, which worried anti-federalists and people concerned about states' rights. So, you know, all this insurrectionism coming from Larry about how he wants to arm himself against our government and shoot and kill government officials when he thinks they're tyrannical, that that era ended on Excuse Friday. me, James Madison was an insurrectionist. He was part of an insurrection against British tyranny. Yeah, and to say that now, uh, right? somehow I'm participating in conspiracy theories when we've caught our own government in fast and furious supplying the Mexican cartel with the very kinds of guns you all would like to ban, I think that goes over the top. Let's take a pause from the constitutional conversation. And I want to kind of, as we, we don't have unlimited time, I want to focus in very specifically on the idea of more guns in schools. Doesn't basic logic tell us that these same teachers that the American right has been calling overpaid and unqualified becoming gun-toting security guards can only lead to disaster, lad? It's madness, David, and I'm not going to treat it as serious. And the people preaching it are, are, are people who hate our government, who are you know, preaching the kind of insurrectionist ideology that you're hearing from Larry. I'm not going to even treat it as serious anymore. Not in the wake of, not after Friday. Well, evidently, you don't treat self-defense seriously. To say that somehow a teacher would have been perfectly useless 
in stopping a mass murderer is to uh, say that nobody should be able to defend themselves. And I think that's part of the problem is that there's a tendency to say that self-defense is somehow uh, unproductive or counterproductive and it only leads to worse things happening. How worse does it have to get with 27 people dead? Surely had somebody come barging into that classroom with a gun, that would have had a much greater chance of ending it rather than the creep running out of bullets. Vlad? I, I just think it's pathetic. I mean, you know, he, here, he, here Larry is. He's lobbied for years to weaken our gun laws to the point where lunatics like Jared Loeffner, James Holmes, Adam Lanza can easily gain guns, often legally because of his lobbying. And now he's telling us that because he's done that and because he's putting us under threat every day, that we should have to bring guns into a classroom with five and six year olds. I think that's disgusting. I think it's time you, to treat you madness think like self defense that. is disgusting. Then there's not much I can do to help no, you. But no, no, I no, think Larry. A no, teacher Larry. there no, with a Larry. gun would have been very undisgusting. It would have been disgusting only to the mass murderer. And if uh, you're finding that disgusting, then we really have a different point of view on the world, don't we? Oh, we certainly do. All right. Uh, there's certainly much more that can be said. I think we've uh, we've seen that people are coming at this from drastically different sides. I wonder how possibly we could ever come together on some kind of compromise on this. Hopefully the next the next few days, weeks and months will give us a sense of that. I wish we had more time. We've been speaking with Larry Pratt, the executive director of Gun Owners of America and Lad Everett, the director of communications at the Coalition to Stop Gun Violence. Uh, gentlemen, I, I appreciate you being here today, even if we couldn't get much agreement. Good to be with you. Thank you, David. Thank you, guys. Take care.